Hello everyone. So this is the very first video in a tutorial series called Creating a Racing Game in Unity. And um, when you finish this tutorial series, you'll basically have the core to create as many levels as you want and create a racing game where you race against AI um, in a player car. Um, it'll track laps, um, positioning, winning conditions. There'll be a game manager object that will track how many laps you want for each race. You set that. Um, you set how many AI players you want to compete against. You want to compete against one. Do you want to compete against five, eight? Um, everybody's position will be tracked in real time, so the readout will tell you uh, you're in fifth position, second position. There will be winning conditions, so you can place up to first place, second place, third place, and then anything fourth place and higher is loss. Um, and a bunch of other stuff that I'm probably not thinking of at the moment, but basically racing game core with everything you expect from a racing game. Lap tra tracking, position tracking, racing times, um, cool you know, control of your car, intelligent AI to drive around and compete against you. Um, so yeah, um, so basically here's my brand new empty Unity project and I would suggest that you guys do the same thing and just create an empty, fresh, brand new Unity project. I'm using the 2x3 layout in my project window, I'm just using the one column layout here. Um, I've undocked and I'm floating my game window around because I think it starts out like that, but what a pain in the butt. And my console window down here is out. Um, it's window, console, it's not showing up. Um, file, build settings, and I'm on web player. I think by default it's PC, Mac. I find the web player is probably one of the quickest ways to just do build and run and be playing your game the quickest. Uh, the standalone is pretty quick too. Um, so that's how my project's set up. Um, you know, nothing says you can't have your project set up a different way, but if you want to kind of match what's going on here in the video and follow along that way, then that works. And this is Unity Pro for PC too, and that's why it's the skin's all dark. But uh, Nothing we're going to do in this tutorial requires Pro. This can be done in the free indie version as well. So down in the video description um, of this video, there are going to be three download links in there for three Unity package files. And this is what they look like when they're downloaded. One is the import for the car model. One is the import for the track. And that's also going to bring in the track's collision and the art. And then the other one is an import for the waypoints. Uh, the way that I create waypoints is I can't stand uh, game object, create empty, and then like control D to duplicate it and moving them around and um, doing it manually that way. So I create them in my 3D app. Um, oops, close that. I create them in my 3D app when I'm creating the track. I create the waypoints. Uh, based on a spline and I just duplicate the waypoints down the spline. You'll see what they look like here momentarily. So um, grab those three assets. The, the car is actually a paid asset of mine but we really needed a decent car for this tutorial so I'm gonna just put it in there for free. It's a pretty neat classic car so once you've downloaded all of those go into assets, import package, custom package and let's just grab that neat car there's all the stuff for it, um, the shader, the textures, the models, and the shader is actually mobile. Um, you'll see it here in just a moment. So if you did want to, we, you know, you want to convert this over to mobile input in the future. This is definitely optimized for that. So here are the LODs. This is the highest resolution down to the lowest resolution. For the player, um, we'll only use the high one because it's going to be the same distance from the camera at all times, but for the AI cars, we're going to end up using these other LODs. So just drag it in and hit the F key, and uh, you can see it in there. It's got reflectivity to it, and it's a reflectivity fake, um, and by that I just mean it's just mapping this single um, texture all over it, and it's just kind of blitting it on top of the diffuse. And, it looks really good on a mobile phone and it's a reflection map fake 
but it only uses a single reflection texture, you know, whereas in Unity cube maps and stuff like that use like six, six or eight textures. So that's why this is, and the shader's really optimized. So I think I had it open. This is it. This is the entire uh, bulk of this shader right here. So not a whole lot going on at all. Um, okay. And so we have the car in. Let's go assets, import package, custom package, and bring the track in. It's all the materials, models, some of the textures. This is a very simple track, but for, for the tutorial purposes, um, it'll work great. Okay, environment assets, there it is, track one. We'll drag it over. Move this out of the way. We don't need the console window right now. And the grid is annoying. And there it is. It uh, looks kind of funky right now because we don't have a light. So let's go game object, create other, directional light. Let's go to our little neat reset gear and just click reset. I like to drag the sun up maybe 35 units. I'm going to hold down, I'm going to hit the E key for rotation gizmo or just this little button. We're going to hold down the control key on the keyboard. And just drag this red X X and it snaps incrementally. Uh, I like to do the snapping that way. And then we'll also snap it like a little bit this way. Also, I have my gizmo, gizmo settings for the sun set to local. If you see it like this, global, it's not local to the light, it's actually global to the world. Just swap it over to local, okay? So you can snap the light to its own coordinates. Pretty neat. Let's get some neat shadows on there. Let's just do hard shadows are fine. High res. We'll give them strength of 0.75. All right. So our car's got some shadows going. Pretty neat little car with a reflection fake. Now the reflection map I imported in for you guys was like one I was using in a garage showroom but uh, if you have your own like texture of a sky or something neat like that I wonder how well that will work. Some of them don't work very well. I don't think that one works very well. You can map any texture in on it but depending on its brightness and darkness values it may not reflect at all. But sometimes I'll put in like a blue sky in there or a, uh, you can put in a colored texture too. I'll put in like a, bl a black and white version of a sky and it'll reflect clouds on the car. I mean, since we're making a PC build, it's not really important to use this like ultra optimized shader, but oh well. Always good to plan ahead for mobile or web applications, right? So we can name our sun sunlight, something like that. And I always try to give the sun a little bit of an orangish hue because it has that naturally and maybe we'll just make it a little bit brighter midday mid noon sun okay so the tracks well lit cars cars reflecting not too shabby uh now we will bring in the uh what this is is this is just an art mesh um, there's no collision. See, we have a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and then the materials. There's no collision. So the car's not set up to have a rigid body or a collider yet, so there's no gravity or anything like that. But there's literally no collision if there were on the car, and it would just fall out of the track. So what we want to do is bring in this other track collision over here, but before we do, just make sure that optimized mesh is checked off, blend shapes is off, and for both of them, turn off animation. Once you turn off animation, it'll just nullify out the animation tab. Uh, my skill factor was one. Okay. Um, on the track art, I checked on generate light map UVs. It just means later in the future that Unity has automatically created a set of UVs for the light map so I could light map this track without worrying about UVs at all. Okay, your should have came in on the import 
um, the prefab, the package file with these settings, but if it didn't. And generate colliders is off for the artwork. That's why this track has no collision. We don't want to generate the collision off this because this is actually a higher resolution mesh and it has a lot more detail on it than we actually need to process. So we created a separate collision file and on it we turn off light map EVs because it's actually not going to be seen. It's invisible collision. And we check on generate colliders. Okay, so we will generate a collider on it. I'm just going to left mouse drag it on over. And by default, it does have a renderer on it, so we see it. Let's right click on that and remove that component. And now it's set to be collision. So you have all this, uh, these vertices and polygons for the art and everything, which this is actually a mobile ready asset. That's pretty low, <clears throat> low poly count. But our collision is even, even lower, which is great. Optimized, works well, and it's separated. So now we have our art, our collision. We just need the waypoints, and I don't believe we brought those in yet. So let's go assets, import package, custom, and bring in the waypoints. Now the AI are going to use the waypoints to track around the track. Basically, they follow around them, but they're but they're going to be offset different distances from them. This is not like they're just going to follow this line straight around the track and it doesn't look very competitive or intelligent. They actually offset on either the right or left side and they have different speeds when they hit waypoints and they determine their angles in turns around waypoints. So they'll actually kind of intelligently hit the brakes and speed up or slow down. Um, so let's bring in the waypoints. The player will actually use the waypoints too, and the player car will track the waypoints for position checking. It's one of the aspects checking of, well, which waypoint are we at versus which waypoint are each of the AI at. So let's just drag those in. Um, same skill factor on these. No animation imported, and we don't need anything on these. We don't need colliders, light maps, anything like that. <clears throat> So, with the waypoints brought in, we can look in. There's a folder holding them, and then each one. And I'm going to shift select all of them. And what we can do is just turn off the mesh renderer for right now. Um, what we're going to do is create a script here. And what I'm going to do is try to keep these tutorials shorter, under 15 or 20 minutes. Some of them may be longer. So we're going to probably end this initial setup tutorial, and in the next tutorial we'll just create up uh, a simple script to draw icons or, or, or gizmos in the Unity editor. We won't actually see them in the game window, but in the editor you'll see them, and it'll draw little invisible gizmos for every one of your waypoints um, around the track. So with that said, We'll save that setup for the next video, and um, I hope to see you guys then.